Hello friends, today we are going to start the topic evolution of cloud computing. Cloud, the disruptive technology that we know is the outcome of technological advancements over many years. A statement made by Maria Spignola, cloud computing is not a technology revolution, but rather a process and business evolution on how we use the technologies that enables cloud computing as it exists today. Although it feels like cloud computing has arrived all of a sudden, the reality is that it has gone through decades of slow evolution. As the concept expanded to include more sharing a processor, it became known as utility computing and then the grid computing in the 1980s and early 1990s. These were hazy visions that remained dreams because even their proponents knew they lacked an efficient delivery mechanism. The ubiquitous broadband connectivity proliferated by the internet solved that service delivery problem. Established companies recognized their familiar visions and jumped into cloud computing business. Those decades of evolving experience are the reasons that so many cloud computing services have appeared so rapidly now that conditions are finally right. The evolution can be split into three phases. The first one is the idea phase. This started in 1960s and stretched to the pre-internet bubble era. The core idea of computing as a utility computing and grid computing developed. The next one is the pre-cloud phase. This started around in 1999 and lasted till 2006. In this phase, internet as the mechanism to provide application as a service got developed. Then comes the cloud phase. This phase started in 2007 when the term cloud computing became popular and the sub-classification of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and software as a service got formalized. There are three main figures commonly cited as laying the conceptual framework for cloud computing. They are John McCarthy. J.C.R. Licklider and Douglas F. Parkhill. John McCarthy first proposed in 1957 that time sharing of computing resources might allow components to sell excess computation services for maximum utilization of resources. He even imagined that computation might be organized as a utility. Then Licklider, a programmer, at the Advanced Research Project Agency highlighted some of the promise and challenges in cloud computing in 1963. A memo used to those he described as the members and affiliates of the Intergalactic Computer Network. Specifically, he talked about the ability to send a problem to the network of computers that could then pool their resources to solve it and the need to establish a shared language to allow the computers to talk to one another. In 1966, Parkhill published The Challenge of the Computer Utility, which identified many of the challenges facing cloud computing such as scalability and the need for large bandwidth connections. He also initiated a comparison with electric utilities. Cloud computing timeline, who, when and why. There are many good timelines about the cloud computing availability. A basic timeline to show the evolution of cloud computing service offerings are in 1999, Salesforce launches its software as a service enterprise applications. In 2002, Amazon launches Amazon Web Service, commonly known as AWS, which offer both artificial and human intelligence for problem solving via the internet. Then, in 2006, Google launches Google Docs, which we use these days also. It is an alternative for Microsoft Documents a free web-based competitor to Microsoft Office. Then 2006, Amazon launches EC2. EC2 is known as Elastic Compute Cloud. And 
S3 that is simple storage service sometimes described as first infrastructure as a service. In 2007, Salesforce launches Force.com often described as the first platform as a service. In 2008, Google App Engine was launched. And in 2009, Microsoft launches Windows Azure. Now, with the help of the diagram, we are going to understand the evolution of cloud computing. First, the private cloud evolution. Now, since for the IT companies, they were first working on the Siloid infrastructure. Siloid infrastructure means they are physical, dedicated, static, heterogeneous. That means when the companies do not want to share their data even to the employees, the complete information they do not want to reveal, they use this Siloid data centers. Then from Siloid data centers, they moved on to the grid. In grid, they were virtual, shared services, dynamic, and then they have the standardized applications. They have a private infrastructure as a service in grid computing, or we can say in grid databases. Then they have this private platform as a service, and then they used the software as a service. After grid computing, then they went to the cloud services, and from grid, they evolved to the private cloud. Now, private cloud has self-service, policy-based resource management, chargeback and capacity planning. Then from private cloud, they evolved and went on to the hybrid cloud. The IT companies or we can say the IT companies which were to create their own infrastructures. Hybrid cloud has the federation with public clouds, interoperability and cloud bursting. Now here in hybrid cloud, the companies have their own private infrastructure as a service, private platform as a service and software as a service which interact with the virtual private cloud. This virtual private cloud interacts with the public cloud and it has its own software as a service, platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Or we can say this hybrid cloud is the combination of private cloud and public cloud. In conclusion, cloud computing is a revolutionary style of computing emerging from the evolutionary changes. It is the old wine in a new bottle. Cloud is not formed out of a big bang, but it is definitely creating a digital big bang. This digital big bang is fundamentally transforming every industry sector we think of and leaving a profound impact in our lives. Thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikira. Subscribe to Ikira.